Sometimes uh, when we convert units, we're given a measurement. For example, one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. And this is a ratio that we need to hold on to when solving a problem like this. Or one liter for every 1,000 milliliters. Let me just fix this one over here. And in fact, I'll put L for liter because typically that's what you'll see is 1L. So 1 liter for every 1,000 milliliters. And this problem, this person's filling a tank with water, and we know it holds this many liters. So how many milliliters does it hold? And um, what we need to realize is that we have a new ratio now. Instead of 1 liter, we have 250 liters. So now, how many milliliters will that be? Well, 1 times 250 is 250. So because we're keeping the ratio constant, we have to also multiply 1,000 by 250, and that's 250,000 milliliters, which is our answer right here. These other problems are here um, perhaps because they're hoping you'll misplace um, a decimal and realize or think it's 25,000. I believe that 25 might be there because they're thinking you might somehow reverse this process. But when you have this original ratio, the one they give you, they realize that from the start that whatever amount of liters there are, there have to be a thousand times more milliliters. And in this process right here where I compared the parts, this was easy to realize that one liter goes into 250, 250 times. But if there's ever a difficult conversion in there, what you're finding is how many times you have to multiply this number to get this number, so you use division. You would do 250 liters divided by one liter, and that'll tell you what the number you need to multiply by. That might give you a more complicated setup. In, uh, in this problem, we have fruit punch for family, and she wants to make two gallons of fruit punch. So start by highlighting the important terms. Two gallons is very important here. So how many cups is this and so we want to go from gallons to cups so fortunately they give us all the tools we need to do that right here and we can break it down by steps one gallon for every four quarts and next to that if we have a quart we have two pints and if we have one pint we have two cups so now we can break this down step by step and in fact um, I'm going to just double this ratio because I know that one gallon is four quarts, so two gallons are eight quarts. Great. So now I'm going to use this information and apply it here. We're gone away from gallons. We now know how many quarts we have. So instead of one quart for two pints, I need to know how many pints there are in eight quarts because eventually pints will tell me how many cups we have. So if one quart is two pints, then 8 quart is 16 pints. Again, I just multiplied 1 by 8 to get 8 and 2 by 8 to get 16. So now we're going to use this number to figure out how many pints I have. If 1 pint is 2 cups, then now we have 16 pints. Well, this new ratio is 16 times larger part for part than this one. So 1, times, one pint times 16 gives me 16 pints. So 2 cups times 16 will give me the amount of cups I need. And there's my answer right here. So I, to guide myself through this process, it seems complicated. What I always do is I say, I want to go from this unit to this one. And I write that out so I can keep track of it. And then I start by setting up my first ratio. One gallon is four quarts. And then I use this ratio first because that's the first thing they give me, which are gallons. So if we have one gallon, I found out how many two gallons it was. And they gave me quarts. They give me how many quarts are in a pint, but I know I have eight quarts with two gallons, and then I go from there. Eight quarts is 16 pints. I know how many cups one pint is, but I have 16 pints. So I need to change this ratio to equal this one right here with our answer of 32 cups.